Timothy, you said that you believe, along with writer George Pember, that there is a possibility of a civilization that existed before Adam and Eve, and that we can find that in Genesis 1, 1 through 2. Will you explain that for us? Well, as I said in that, that awesome uh, trailer you guys put together the, of, of my uh, teaching series, um, you know, the Bible, the biblical narrative depicts um, a, a scenario, a, what's called a pre-Adamic paradigm, a, scen a scenario in which things were happening in the universe before the creation of man. So in other words, before Adam showed up on the stage, there had other, th th there's a whole history preceding Adam. And we know that precisely because of the scripture that I cited in that video um, from Job, where we, where we see that the, we read that the, the sons of God shouted for joy when the earth was created. Mm. And so that, in, that scripture alone um, uh, paints this, scenario, this pre-Adamic paradigm in which there was, there's some kind of a history that precedes mankind with, this, with the other sons of God. And so that's really the starting point of the biblical narrative. The starting point of, of our story, our story is not the very beginning. Our story comes in the procession of time. Mm -hmm. Mankind has a very specific role to play in, in the story, in the, in the grander narrative um, and uh, remember, remember that the narrative is not about us. It's about Christ. Yeah, right. It's his story. And we are right. ancillary characters in his story. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so this idea of, and this is uh, what Pember wrote about as well, uh, the, the notion that the, the earth was created just a few days before man, uh, there's a lot of Pember, Pember and a lot of other uh, really good scholars, biblical scholars, theologians, who throughout the ages and even today have contended that we are misreading the first and second verse of Genesis. And of course, the first verse one through two of Genesis reads, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And there's a whole technological unfold. I mean, a whole, um, um, there's, it's very, um, uh, intricate the Pember's argument, and and there's a lot of scriptures involved, and and uh, and he articulates it very well in his book Earth's Earliest Ages, uh, which is which is I think his magnus opus. And by the way, George H. Pember was a theologian who was writing in the uh, in the 19th century, and he's and he's a celebrated theologian. And again, he promoted the idea that the inaugural verses of the biblical narrative describe the earth in a state of utter desolation post-judgment. So in other words, um, the opening verses of the book of Genesis uh, do not depict the very beginning. Instead, they depict the beginning of, of mankind, when mankind comes on the scene. But in fact, what we find in the opening verses of Genesis is a, is a world that has just undergone a cataclysm post judgment. In other words, something happened. There was some kind of a rebellion, which of course, we're all familiar with, with that narrative in the, in, in the Bible. And that Adam was created in the aftermath of that judgment that happened uh, on the earth and in, and, and, and in the cosmos in general. And again, it's very intricate and detailed um, ar argument um, that Pember makes and others make. And sometimes this is called the gap theory. Um, but basically, it's and, and because it's so intricate, I, I don't want to get into the details. Right. But basically, when you when you plug all the pieces together, what Pember's arguments and the arguments of other theologians and scholars, you come up with a very different reading of Genesis one through two. Hmm. And I go through all of this in my book for those right. who are interested. And and this modified reading of Genesis um, one through two reads as follows: In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth but the earth became desolate and empty mm. and darkness was upon the face of the deep. So that's a very different view of the opening scene of Genesis. Now, from that perspective, now, you know, the, the creation of mankind is, is, as I said, is in the procession of time. We are, our, our appearance on the scene is following an act that preceded us. Something happened before we showed up. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's sort of in a nutshell, Pember's, uh, Pember's view.